Hey, everybody, it's Brett. Uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And uh, we're going to kind of do a new layout here, by the way, while we're waiting for people to uh, log in. And um, let's see, uh, it says connecting to audio for some of you guys. So I'm just going to give people a few minutes to log in and uh, set up some some charts here. And so, um, yeah, let's... Uh, Kind of uh, clear these charts and we'll get not much happening in the markets today. So we have a little bit of time, no huge um, uh, rush or push into anything particular. But um, this is a weekly chart here and go to daily. If you guys have any questions, I want to start out with that. And uh, we can go from there. So drawings, we're going to start over on uh, some of these other ones here and there. Okay. So, and then... Um, have our uh, kind of old crypto mastery list. So basically what I want to do here is in the format is we can kind of start out kind of like we used to do with the overall map. Now this uh, this is the trading view heat map. Uh, the other one that we used to use was the coins 360. And um, that had a little more color in it, but in terms of there's also ads and things like that. So which one do you guys prefer, by the way? Uh, this one here is you know, the gray box is basically no movement and only shows things that have moved significantly. So XRP is up 2%. It's good at a glance to, uh, to sort of take a look at what's happening, if anything. So we have Litecoin, XRP, and uh, Solana toward the upside, Polygon down a little bit. Uh, I don't look like really seeing the gray boxes. This is a little bit more of a dopamine hit, but at the same time, do we really care? Bitcoin's only up 0.09%. So why don't we unpack that here? And um, in terms of the uh, list of uh, tokens here, we'll have our crypto mastery list updated here soon. Uh, and I wanted to keep this separate and different from the active trader group, which many of you are in. And so in uh, terms of these here though, let's at least certainly add Let's see, certainly add uh, Bitcoin to, uh, let's see, the watch list here for Crypto Mastery. So just do a little housekeeping here, you guys, and um, uh, do that. And then for this chart here, I'm going to remove all the drawings. I don't know, it's it's a bit much here on this chart. Let's clean it up a bit, but certainly not much happening in the land of Bitcoin. And uh, we're going to try to keep this focus to our Crypto Mastery indicators. We may have some uh, new users here today. Uh, attendees rather so we've got uh, private and uh, let's see and lisa pirate j alex and uh, looks like f uh, green is trying to connect so uh let me see i'm gonna clean this list this chart up here we have this is a lot more detail that's more for the active trader so i'm going to clear all the uh, drawings by the way if you're new here to new to trading view you can right click on the charts and click these remove drawings buttons like that all right, so with that out of the way, why don't we kick off with some news and see what's going on. And uh, also we have a new uh, new news source here, and that's uh, the uh, Cointelegraph that uh, Markets Pro, which has kind of a neat news aggregator. So, but anyway, the, so here's the bottom line. The debt ceiling ostensibly has been raised and the markets don't seem to care. Uh, we saw a bit of a rally when that was announced over the weekend, a bit of a pullback uh, yesterday. Sorry, I my eye. And uh, let me add somebody else to the room here. So, um, so yeah, a lot of nothing happening here. And so let's see, this is the tentative uh, the vote. So maybe the vote hasn't quite happened yet. And that's something I hypothesized is that we would have a apparent uh, resolution, markets would rally, or that it would... Uh, that it would uh, apparently fail and we'd have a capitulation and then it would resolve and then it would rally. You know, really, we've been watching and wanting to see that 25,300 support level retest. I'd like to see that retest before we go higher. And we'll look at some of our indicators uh, with that shortly. And let's see, uh, let's big deal, China earthquake, all kinds of news, always changing, isn't it? So that's why we get an overall feel of the news. Don't want to read into any particular news article because uh, these things come and go and um, go all over the place. Let's see, uh, Twitter, some speculation that uh, Twitter, I'm sorry, not Twitter, <laughs> uh, XRP, some speculation that um, it's there's going to be a FOMO bull run, but you can't trade on these things. 
And let's uh, let me pull over this Coin Markets Pro, and then we'll dive into the Crypto Mastery indicators. You know, the getting back to the old Crypto Mastery format, where we kind of look at uh, the overall markets, we'll look at some news, and then we get into the charts. Uh, because again, my monitor has moved somehow. Uh, again, uh, I'm fond of saying, as you guys have heard, show me the news, show me the charts. I'll show you the news rather, because uh, it's often priced in. So let's start here. This is the this is Coin Telegraph's uh, Markets Pro here. It's, they've got a neat dashboard. We also like uh, uh, Crypto Panic is a good one. I'm just trying to aggregate news. Sometimes I'll just go and Google that, and remember, um, you know, our old favorite here, Doctor Google. So let's see. Uh, what do we have? Top trending news. Let's see. Nothing encouraging on the horizon. Dallas Fed manufacturing. Not really that important. Decentralized pancake swap, MetaZone, don't count the metaverse out. Uh, metaverse is going to take a while and will push higher uh, purely on speculation. I think the AI coins are the next sector to run. You know, we had meme coins, we had the DeFi, and then we have the uh, metaverse. And it's always that uh, the new the new thing that people pile into, pump in, and eventually it drops. So be careful with those uh, pumps on these new things that sound great for the future, but don't have any earnings or business models just yet. Uh, we are still early, everybody. So uh, not seeing a whole lot here. Shibuno, we don't really follow. and um, But we'll look at anything that's moving. By the way, if you guys have anything you want to look at, uh, let me know. And I see some more people joined here. Uh, by the way, if you see me looking around, I'm not rolling my eyes. I have a monitor up top here with the uh, participants in the chat. Maybe I'll move those down here because somebody said it looks like I'm rolling my eyes. <laughs> Wouldn't do that to you guys. Uh, so anyway, some new faces here. Mary, Darlene, welcome everyone. So I don't see a whole lot here. And uh, let's the we'll get through some of these other news. I like to pull up the... Uh, all the news that I want to unpack, and then we'll go tab by tab. We'll spend about 15 minutes on news, and then we'll get into what's moving and our indicators. This is primarily Crypto Mastery to show you guys how to use the indicators, and I have some new uh, chart layouts for you guys. All right, so tell you what I'm going to do. I don't need to see me. I just wanted to wave. And uh, by the way, if you're on the uh, YouTube channel watching the replay and like what you see, please like and subscribe and uh, tell us what you want to see on this channel. So, all right, let me kill the video here. Stop video. And uh, we'll dive in. Um, let's see more news on Hacker Tornado Cash. I'm not going to get into that. Let's see transfer ETH and NFTs to Bitcoin with new token standard. That's interesting. That's worth looking at. You know, uh, that's new. Let's see Tether Invest Energy Uruguay a Bitcoin standard author. Um, interesting. Yeah, this is. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit uh, because if you uh, actually Bitcoin standard is a little bit different. There's two good books I recommend reading, The Bitcoin Standard and The Sovereign Individual uh, in Active Trader. You've heard me talk about this uh, new country, uh, Liberland, which is loosely based off of The Sovereign Individual. And uh, well, I'm not going to really go into that. And uh, no, I'm not a, a libertarian conspiracy theorist. Uh, just some interesting things happening in the world of crypto. Uh, Liberland is the first country based entirely on Bitcoin. And uh, they, it's a good place to get dual citizenship without having to spend $100,000 like in some of these Caribbean countries, et cetera, uh, or more. Uh, let's look at this. Bitcoin price rejects 28K. And then pro XRP lawyer alleges lack of approval by SEC ethics. Yeah, these, you know, look, the, the X, SEC XRP uh, battle is just, it, it's getting old, right? I just, I'm going to wait and see XRP start to break out of and close above key support levels and uh, then not really pay attention to it. Uh, let's see, breaking El Salvador. Nothing new here, but I am looking for clues for mass adoption. So uh, this looks like a video, so we don't need to get into that. And, but essentially the headline fully embraces Bitcoin standard. Okay. Uh, you know, contrary to, to, contrary to popular belief and back to the Lieberland, uh, uh the story there they were first before el salvador and see that is liberland.org the reason i'm talking about it is i had the opportunity to interview the president uh, at the bitcoin conference and was invited to a private uh, opening of the washington dc office here last week uh actually exactly one week ago and um uh we talked to vit as the president there and Really nice guy, great uh, project they're building. And physically, this is located, this is not a commercial for Lieberland, by the way. This is very cool stuff, how things are changing. Yeah, so Vit is a friend of mine now, and um, 
And this is located near Croatia, Serbia, but it doesn't matter where it's located. This, again, according to the sovereign individual, which states in the future, your country may be anywhere that you choose to physically live, but you live by their laws as a citizen of a sort of virtual country. So lots to sort out here uh, in the future. But um, anyway, if that's of interest to you, I recommend reading through it. I have this little booklet here and you can get the PDF at Liberland.org. There you go. Uh, again, not, we don't benefit from that, not promoting that, just think it's a cool thing that's happening. All right, let's kind of unpack the news here and so we can get through it. Uh, again, not much happening here today. Wondering why. And I want to get to this one here. The problem with CNBC, though, is that it makes me turn off my ad blocker. So the uh, Bitcoin rises and investors await vote on tentative debt ceiling agreement. So actually, what I want to do is look for debt ceiling news. And um, let's see, the BBC, that is a nice impartial news source without advertising all around it. Uh, let's see, debt ceiling deal. between by So this is not a done deal yet. Okay, that's why. All right, that's why it has to get through Congress. It was a holiday weekend here, so I imagine most of us are not up on the latest on all this. And this is really the biggest news. And uh, debt ceiling deal require Biden to resume collecting. I guess we'll look at these all quickly. Okay, well, we could look at Reuters if we wanted to, but I think we can get the hang of it here. So the reason we do this is to have an overall thesis on the markets and um, understand why things may or may not be moving. So here's Bitcoin. We'll get to our indicators here, which have, which are technically bullish. We'll unpack this here on the weekly. Uh, this is the daily and then the weekly, which are showing somewhat different things, but we'll get to that. Okay. So we want to kind of unpack this uh, overall, what's going on here. So the debt ceiling, you know, again, it's one of those, uh, one of those uh, boy cried wolf kind of things. And please ignore all these news articles over here. I wish I could turn them off. But so um, skimming this, Joe Biden or Congress pass a deal or raise the government's borrowing limit, prevent potentially catastrophic default on debt repayments. As we all know, what's in the deal? Uh, let's see, suspending it till 2025. So they're kicking the can down the road uh, every so often, uh, you know, because we spend so much money here on things we don't need. Uh, let's uh, so borrow more to pay its bills. Um, it is it is a scary thought that this was at 16, 17 trillion not too long ago, and it's practically doubled. I don't know how we we dig our way out of this, to be honest. I think it's um it's really it's an ominous black cloud over the entire economy, the entire world economy and and the markets. And so either you know, just the, the TLDR, either we start printing money and maybe print the trillion dollar coin, which we've talked about and stick a bunch of those in our treasury, essentially quantitative easing until some further point down the road where, you know, that may or may never happen, but uh, kicking it down the, the road for the future generations and administrations. So there's that option or uh, you know, the whole world just goes into turmoil and we have, you know, wars and things. And then in the end, I, I don't know, I'm not an economist. So what do you guys think? But let's see, simple guide to the debt ceiling. We're going to skim this. And um, <clears throat> pardon me that this, uh, so this is what's kind of, you know, I would caution you. And this is my spidey sense. Things are usually not as they seem. And we want to read between the lines. So this is, um, you know what I'm going to do here? I want to hide all these other things here that might be uh, distracting. Look at that. This fancy tool here called Notepad. There we go. We got rid of all those other news articles. We can just focus on this. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, maybe you can. Um, so budget caps, defense spending would increase. Now, how does that make sense? We, we, we I, not to get into politics, but we spend, I, a, a lot of money on defense and airplanes and things that sit and are rarely used. I don't know. Military important, but um, uh, maybe not as important as not uh, blowing up the entire economy. So defense spending would increase to 886 billion. So not by 886 billion, but to 886 billion, which amounts to a 3% rise. All right. Well, that's fine. So no budget caps. So what they're doing is pushing it forward to the next administration, really. 
both sides claim victory here. Yeah, this is this is what we knew would happen. Either they would both complain they never got what they wanted, but both can claim some victory. White House says cuts are not significant and defense rise is what Biden wanted, but it's below the rate of inflation doesn't meet the demands of the more hawkish Republicans. OK, unspent covid funds return. That's interesting. Public health emergency in May. That's yes, mandatory billion. So, you know, they're apparently trying. I don't want to get into too much detail. We're trying to get a larger picture. What the Danes can teach us about debt crisis. Funds to force wealthy Americans easier to get energy. Okay, thinks not on the deal. Student loan relief. Uh, forget student to rescinded. So somehow that survived. Interesting. Um, let's keep going. We, uh, again, I want a bigger picture here. What it is, why there's a debt ceiling. Deal is so the key. The key I'm looking for is why haven't the markets reacted? Okay, and that's because there has to be a vote of the House and Senate this week, perhaps as early as Wednesday. All right, that's that's what we were digging for. So I wouldn't expect to see or hear any uh, of major movements in the markets until this is passed or it does not pass. So here's where we want to be not not be complacent. We want to sort of be wary of. What's the big boomerang here that that uh, could wipe out lots of traders? So I, I what I'm suggesting here is don't go buying into things right now. We uh, we can wait a few days and um, because Congress could kill the deal. I don't know why they would, but or temporarily do it. See, that's kind of why I'm right. My my uh, spidey sense is saying uh, spidey sense is telling me that, okay, maybe there's a glitch here. Everyone's complacent right now. The boy who cried wolf, everything's fine. We always raise the debt ceiling and then boom, a boomerang, uh, that scares and spooks the markets and specifically could. And I've been wanting to see us come down and retest this 25,300 level, maybe, maybe call it 26,000, but, um, you know, if we saw a capitulation drop down here, then that would give us a nice solid push higher on these markets. OK, so uh, these are fresh, clean charts, you guys. I'll, I'll redraw some basic trend lines. We do have more in-depth charts on the active trader class tomorrow, but this is meant for the more beginner and more on the indicators. Right. So so here's the thing. Uh, going back since early 2023, you know, we, we do and have seen these big capitulation drops here. And now we have a trend line support. We also have a, a trend channel. And uh, this is something that not enough people do. Let me just see if we want to redraw that. There's two of two lines potentially here. Oops. And uh, this is just some basic TA, but, you know, this is important to keep an eye on. What I imagine we are in is more of this type of uh, trend channel. Let me draw that down a little bit so you guys can see it. And, uh, you know, we certainly do a lot of this in the active trader class so that, um, you know, once you can draw these zones, it, it's pretty accurate in terms of containing the price action. And we can just trade the, uh, the bottom and top ranges of the zone. So if we were to drop here, let's say there's a big scary curveball here this week and the markets overreact as they do. Right, because we also have to keep in mind we have this kind of kind of in a you know symmetrical triangle. I guess you could also draw it this way and say, but either way, we've got to pick a direction. And so if we come back down here again, here's this twenty five thousand eight hundred, um, you know, call it twenty five thousand five hundred on a shorter time frame. This this range here actually, it, you know, this twenty five thousand three hundred was also significant. So now we have this big complicated chart here, but you need to know where these levels are. So um, in this zone here, what I'm suggesting is on a pullback, this would be an ideal time to re-enter crypto, whether it's Bitcoin or anything, because Bitcoin is the North Star. It is the leader that everyone follows in the markets. And why is that? The bigger players, the hedge funds, institutions, and whales, they have algorithmic trading that essentially pushes money into the markets at predefined percentage allocations across the board. Okay, very sophisticated stuff. So that's, you know, that's why it happens. But and we can get into, and we do get into things like Bitcoin dominance, ETH dominance on the class, uh, the active trader class tomorrow. We're not going to get into that today. Um, so point of all this is, the, the question really is, do we hold above the 50 and 21 day exponential moving averages? 
Or do we have another fake out to the bottom of the trading range? At which point, here's the key point, at which point we'd want to wait for, what did I do there? Uh, we, no, here. We want to wait for a bottoming of our TSI in a bounce. So our best opportunities are when we are coming down off of these lower levels, as we know, and we have an ERI and a TSI kind of bouncing. We sort of had that here, but it didn't quite happen strongly enough. However, we, we are still in a bullish uh, sequence here. So we have a green signal line. These are the four horsemen. We have ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. So we have technically on the daily in Bitcoin, a key and a bell. A bell is our buy signal, and we're in a number one sequence. So uh, the, the reason it hasn't done more, again, is the debt ceiling. So the big question is, and I can't tell you which way it goes because it's uh, it's it's incongruent. We have, you know, when in doubt, stay out. So the ERI didn't quite fire in, in this area. And I want to touch on the nuance here of what the ERI really is. The early reversal indicator is essentially we're watching and following the footsteps of the elephants. Okay. So back here if we see and i'll turn on the eri and i know i got ahead of ourselves and got out away from the news but i think it's important this eri here this green arrow when we look at the oscillator version of it this is a bit painful to look at i know but i want you guys all to understand it what these vertical green lines are they coincide with the green arrows on the uh the other version of the chart so there's the eri overlay the eri oscillator they're the same just the arrows make it easier to read just want to make sure that's clear but on this the the trigger for this is if this oscillator it's this proprietary uh, that, that we've created comes down to below three in this case it hit the zero line and back above 20 in three time periods and in this case one time two three this hit it so that's what it is this requires a fair amount of volume and velocity, okay, which which isn't you and me and your neighbor buying Bitcoin. This is a big programmatic buy by an institution, whale or similar, you know, ETF, you name it. But this, it takes a fair amount of buying momentum and volume and size to move this this quickly. And that's what we, this is an accidental discovery that we had. It's a pattern I noticed in an old version of this oscillator that we are nearly going to, uh, to get rid of. Many of you know the story, but uh, we, then Joe, our genius uh, part programmer and partner uh, who couldn't be here today, but um, he um, was able to code this with a uh, Keltner band, which, which I don't want to get into the weeds here. The basic of this is back here, a stronger signal with this ERI. Saw it again here, okay, but we didn't get it here. And, and so that's why this bounce isn't as strong as we would normally have hoped. The ERI happened here, didn't quite get one right here. Uh, ordinarily, we look for ERI, TSI going green, but the confirmation was green and going above 20. So this is sort of a feeble kind of bottoming pattern here and, uh, and not the ideal scenario. So, so that we know what we are looking for, let's go back in time a little bit. We'll get in our DeLorean and go back in time here to the uh, March 2023. So when we had the ERI, again, that large volume momentum bounce from here, we got the arrow and we have the TSI going green the next day above 20. Above 20 is that trigger. Then the signal line up going green and a key and a bell. This is our ideal setup. So actually, I'm just going to take a screenshot of that just so you can see this and in a moment of time. So these are what we were looking for. Okay, uh, coming down, you know, and ideally, these are most effective after a, a significant kind of sell off. So here's where we sort of created the bottom of this channel. And if I widen this a bit, we can see what we're looking at down and up that kind of a bounce. But I want to sort of zero in on what we're watching for on the bullish scenario. So ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. So when you get those, that's really what we're looking for, okay? And uh, of course we have our, our checklist. Uh, so let's see, question here. Um, Rick says we need to increase revenues. Yep, absolutely. You know, that it's a great comment because um, 
there's a, a screenshot that I shared with some people uh, privately uh, that Elon posted, Elon Musk, of course. And he said, it's easier to increase uh, sales by 10,000 than try to cut costs by 10,000. You know, most people, many people that, um, and I don't want to sound negative towards saving and people that are frugal with money. That's certainly important uh, in business. I think this, you know, in business, which is kind of what the, the U.S. is a business, it's easier to raise revenues than to cut costs. Doing both, obviously, better, but it's a good comment, Rick. Um, Sam says both sides can claim victory because we are you know, we're the real losers. Yeah, you know that that's true, Sam. <clears throat> we um, you know, hate to put on a failure uniform, but the U.S. is failing in in that regard, and. And, um, you know, we're sort of a bipolar government. You know, one day it's this, the other day it's the other. I, in some ways, it makes us unpredictable and therefore dangerous, which is why we probably haven't been attacked and invaded yet. But that's a whole other conversation uh, and um, and not what we want to get into. Darlene says, uh, Brett, can you draw a short term descending trend line since mid-April? And have I done that? Maybe so. Maybe I did that already. Can't you draw a short-term descending trend line since mid-April? We could be at a lower low. All right, let's take a look at that. Uh, Mid-April. So so I had just done that, Darlene, and I guess great minds think alike. So this is exactly right. So a lower, well, a lower high and a lower low. So this could be drawn several ways. And I just sort of default to what my eyes see. Uh, call it just experience. I don't know. And, and I reserve the right to sometimes be wrong. Not, not often, but sometimes. And uh, so it's also true that we're in a downtrending channel within an uptrending channel. So, you know, we could go into the weeds here, but this is a bearish uh, move in a bullish uptrend. And so, you know, or is it a bull rally in a bearish market? So overall, it's been coming down. It's uh, It's not easy to tell. Although, I will say that our ERI has been remarkably accurate, especially when you get a couple in a row. And there are some nuances to that that uh, we share in the uh, the checklist. By the way, um, how many of you, do you guys all have? Uh, Darlene, yeah, great. Yep, we, I didn't see your comment, but um, saw that too. Do you guys all have the Crypto Mastery checklist? And if not, I don't know if we can drop a file into the chat. I don't know if we can. Uh, Myrene, if you're on, which you may not be, I know you're, uh, 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 but um, they uh, have some weather issues there, but um, could drop a link in there. Do you guys all have that? And what I'll just do is pull it up and then I'm going to come back to the news though, and then we'll come back to this, but we're on a roll here. So basically on the crypto mastery checklist, you will be able to check off how many things in in order or how many of these bullish scenarios there are and the more, the better. So right now, what do we have? We don't have, we don't have either a bullish or bearish ERI, which is interesting. So this ERI though, we saw it call it nailed the top here in April, boom. And then a little bit of a bounce here. Now this, this class again is really for nuancing the crypto mastery indicators. So we do overall news. We look at uh, the overall market. So you know, we're kind of keeping an eye on things pretty quiet, though. So we're going to really spend more time on the indicators. But uh, again, the nuances of this are ERI and then the TSI landing and going up with the signal line right after it. So this was a feeble bounce here, or a weak bounce because we had ERI TSI, but signal line was red in the trend indicator, really our fourth horseman. Um, that uh, was still red and in non-trending. Again, the trend indicator is great for more trend follow-through. When this green arrow fires, that is in conjunction with the key. The key stands for hey, a, a new trend may be uh, coming, and a bull, a new bullish trend. Red and the white bars are is, is there is no trend. We we don't use it for the short side because. Shorting is dangerous. It's difficult. We we touch on that in Active Trader a little bit, but this you know, this is really for most people where we want to wait for the bullish turnarounds, the trend reversals. And so you see this arrow here. This is one of my favorite indicators that Joe's created uh, because of the simplicity. Kind of gamifies it a bit. You kind of expect to see Mario from Mario Brothers jumping along 
grabbing all the coins, right? So the key is, hey, pay attention. The bell is the buy signal. And then we have our number sequence with take profit one, first dollar sign, take profit two, the bag of money to get out of the position. Now, sometimes, you know, I do recommend a uh, keeping a um, moon bag, uh, especially in, when we really get into the bull market. But for the most part, waiting for the next key in the bell. And often we'll see a pullback on the dollar sign and it's better to re-enter uh, unless, you know, if you're swing trading, like many of us are for the new bell. So we had the bell here, which sort of petered out. And so the reason that we like these all in uh, to be aligned is because we had an early signal not to get in here because the TSI was red. So that makes sense, you guys, for just look for alignment on all of these things. And uh, OK, so back to this. So again, what we are looking for is that perfect alignment. And we don't have that yet. On the daily basis, what we have are uh, some inconclusive signals here. We have we don't have a bullish ERI. Certainly, this could be the ceiling, and we need to see a breakout above that. I think more than likely, we do pull back down to the 25,008 region and probably a wick down to this. I think it would really be important for us to, to retest this 25,300 level. Why is that? Because it's such an important uh, support resistance area that hasn't been retested yet. And we were watching that previously. So if you go all the way back here, clearly you know it broke down through it like a, a butter through hot knife through butter right there, came up, acted as resistance, came back many months later, pushed higher, didn't quite get there, right into 25.3 resistance. So the third time put in a nice bounce off the lower end of this channel. So that created and confirmed the channel, pushed up here above 25.3. And then we even kind of pushed all the way up here on low volume though. It's the other thing we haven't really been watching here, huge volume here. So that move was to be believed, but then the volume just dropped, just dropped off. And then we kind of pushed higher here, but that would be an indication of, uh, you know, some divergence there. So keep that in mind. The big volume moves are more believable. And so that would, that's why we kind of failed and dropped off here. So point of that is, what was the point? Uh, let me clean this up a bit. The point of that is, that so that 25.3 level hasn't been retested. So we pushed up here, came back, now found support on the 50-day exponential moving average. I like that, pushed up higher there, lower high, came down below the 21 and 50-day EMA, uh, lower high again, so and a lower low. So that's what we're seeing. So what's the most likely scenario? From here, I would suggest that, um, you know, the debt ceiling is really the wild card though, you guys. But show me the chart, I'll tell you the news. I think, you know, we kind of, you know, maybe get a, a scare just just from experience. We get some kind of spooky uh, scares. Oh, my God. It's and then boom, 25.3 on a wick closes up above here. And then we do something like that. And, and then you guys also know from Active Trader what I think happens if we can break above 32K. Then I think it's up uh, upwards, uh, oh, moving on up to 48.50K maybe. So there you have it, folks. Take a screenshot if you want. That is uh, my, my squiggly lines have been somewhat prophetic in the past. Uh, and, um, you know, this is more than likely what happens. Typically, price rockets off of strong support. And we have kind of had a weak little bounce here. Okay, so it would be better for everybody. That's why I'm saying don't go long here just yet. And even if this pushes higher Wednesday, it will likely sell off again and come retest. So uh, I would suggest be careful, wait toward kind of midweek and, and even end of the week. We'll look at a weekly chart here in a moment uh, for some other clues. Uh, and uh, But let's just, so let's keep that in mind. And let's come back to the news a little bit here. Let's see, we don't need CNBC. Uh, Forbes here, big deal, suddenly braced huge China earthquake. So let's see, did we finish with debt ceiling? Uh, loan payment pause nixed in debt limit agreement. So that's their arm wrestling over the loan repayments. Uh, I don't know, mixed feelings about this. I'm not certainly not fair, but um, anyway. Uh, what is this all about? Russia issues arrest warrant for Lindsey Graham over Ukraine. Yeah, well, anyway, so tension's heating a little bit. Um, I will just touch on that, by the way. You know, there is another possible shoe to drop at any point, and that is the China-Taiwan 
tension. And that could, um, you know, that could happen at any point here. My gut feeling is we see that percolate higher as we the markets are pushing higher, either around 32K or 50K, and they use that as a reason to uh, crash the markets again, you know, in the, the overall bottoming cycle here. But I do believe the bottom is in which we'll look at here in a moment. Uh, and uh, we have excellent signals for that on a monthly basis. So, all right, let's take a look at this big deal. Crypto suddenly embraced huge China earthquake uh, price swings. What's the China earthquake? I don't I imagine that's um, a, a metaphor for them banning Bitcoin again. There's subscribing to Bitcoin. So what is it? China could be about... Worlds uh, predict China could be about to trigger the next Bitcoin price bull run. Well, that's interesting. Uh, China's a big holder of Bitcoin, you know, uh, regardless of them keeping uh, banning the mining of Bitcoin. Incidentally, uh, if you haven't already seen, gone and watched the video we pushed out in today's newsletter from the highlights of Bitcoin 2023, the... Um, there's an excellent video there about uh, with Cynthia Loomis, which um, talks about what they're doing to minimize uh, the carbon, the footprint, the on the economy or not the economy, the ecology. So basically, what they're doing is they are mining oil. Mining, sorry guys, it's been a long week. They're drilling oil in her state of Montana, I believe, and they are it's Wyoming or Montana. Uh, and they are taking the methane from that, which normally would go in the atmosphere. And they're using the methane to power mining rigs to supplement and stabilize the power grid. Boom. Check, please. Mic drop. Game over. Guys, it's still, all of this narrative of how it's bad for the uh, the ozone. Uh, not if we do it right. So Cynthia Loomis, great interview uh, for that. Uh, you can YouTube, Google that from the Bitcoin conference. And that was a uh, big announcement. So anyway, so anyway, China, I don't know. They, they keep banning Bitcoin mining, but they're a big holder of it. So what does this mean? You know, we've been talking about supply shock for some time, uh, but this is just park this in the back of your mind. We don't need to breathe into this. That's the key point. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I think we've gone down that rabbit hole. What do we have here? El Salvador fully embraces Bitcoin standard. Okay, check the box. Uh, positive adoption. Boom. Next news. Let's see. Transfer ETH NFTs to Bitcoin with new token standard. Okay, here's another checkbox for mass adoption. We don't want to get too far into this because there's always opposing news articles. But I'm looking for signs of adoption, which will fuel the next bull run. Uh, and by you know adoption and people using crypto and having it built into a lot of the new tech. By the way, another great video. Let me see if I can find that um, because we did put out a in our newsletter today. Let me see if I can find the page. Uh, so the highlights of a link to the highlights of the Bitcoin event, and there was a panel with a an investor that uh, I met last year. And so essentially strong interest still in uh, all of the uh, the building out of infrastructure and very cool things happening that uh, in the uh, the world. So that would lead to mass adoption. And let me just do this here. So here we go. Hope you guys can see this. Actually, I don't know if you can because it's a different uh, tab. All right, let me do this. Uh, I got. I, I need to reboot this machine here. So here's the, my Gmail here. But crypto news. This is our newsletter. If you don't already have it, and all the way at the bottom here is these highlights from the Bitcoin conference. So essentially, uh, let me grab the link and I'll put it in the chat. So that's in the chat. So basically, these are links to some of the best speakers. Thermodynamic savings. That was highlight Michael Saylor. I nearly got a chance to meet him. By the way, I was rounding up. Uh, uh, an interview with Max uh, uh, Max Wright and another one of his people. I, I speak on his YouTube channel and another guy, Juan, and I was going down the escalator to get Juan and apparently Michael Saylor walked by Max and uh, uh, he didn't grab him for some reason and um, almost, almost got him on an interview. But uh, we, by the way, we are planning a big crypto virtual summit, hoping to get Max, hoping to get Cynthia Loomis. She hears the... Uh, state of change that uh, 
video uh, interview about uh, mining uh, RFK, by the way, running for president. He's a Bitcoiner. Um, uh, sadly, I, I don't know that he'll win. He's got some some kind of thing going, going on with his voice. It makes it hard to, li to listen to, unfortunately. But uh, Jack Mallers announced uh, they strike is now able to transact instantaneous Bitcoin payments uh, over the Lightning Network over to 3 billion people. 3 billion people, they've dramatically expanded their reach. That is mass adoption. So uh, there's some other good articles here uh, that you might want to see. The panel that I was mentioning was, I believe, uh, maybe we didn't include that one. Yeah, that was a different one. Anyway, uh, take my word for it. it it's um, the first one of the first sessions, and uh, they're talking about all the interest in uh, in investing rather in new technology. So that's the takeaway. Okay. Uh, new token standard. Let me open up that article. Where are we on time? We're, we're kind of spending too much time on news, but we're going back and forth. Transfer your ETH NFTs to Bitcoin with new standard. Is this maybe related to ordinals? I don't know. Uh, Digital asset summit next year. I have to go to that. So uh, here we go. Bitcoin ordinals I received. Yep. Fresh utility introduction of new token standard aimed at facilitating this is big news, guys. Uh, if you're not familiar with Bitcoin ordinals, that's their answer to NFTs. Uh, you can read about that, but uh, it's called an uh, instance, I believe, or um, uh, they. But they have this new utility, and uh, there's other. There's another guy I was talking to at the Bitcoin conference where they can uh, they can move Bitcoin and ordinals instantaneously and free. So no more price uh gas fees and slippage and things like that and no more waiting um, bitcoin lightning is going to be able to do that too but this is new news migration of ethereum based nfts onto bitcoin huh let's see uh this is uh new that not is this i think this is going to be huge actually permissionless bridging from eth to bitcoin okay we'll check another box for mass adoption Let's see, NFT collection, right? Ordinals market. Um, okay. But sorry. So initially seems somewhat uh isolated, not not maybe not big news just yet. Okay. Anyway, burn extra NFT. That's enough about that. Blockworks Digital Asset Summit. I'll look at that personally. Bitcoin standard, um, Bitcoin Office Economic Advisor. Uh sure. By the way, Strike, Jack Mallers and Strike, uh, they've moved to El Salvador uh as their core office. So Things are happening, you guys. There's a groundswell going on. Okay, uh, let's see. And we covered that. All right, well, let's get back to things. Any other questions, you guys? I don't see anything there. All right, so uh, back to Bitcoin here. So this is what I suggest could happen. Talked about this. We are approaching overbought status on the TSI. However, you know, we can, we still could push up. Yeah, it looks when in doubt, look at uh, zoom out, right? So back here, we can ride the upper overbought zone for some time here. So I think as of now, even though we don't have a fresh ERI, it looks like we push higher on our indicators. And that's in that's in contrast to what I'm seeing in the overall chart. So what happens here? Uh, I have been doing more of these trend lines on the TSI. So we are going to look at the weekly next for an overall thesis. But uh, here I would suggest that we pull back here and then we want to see another bounce higher on all our indicators. That would be that'll be the ideal and opportune time, in my opinion, to get into these markets. Let's take a look at why I believe the bottom is in. So this is a, a weekly chart. What I want to do is uh, recreate this on a, a monthly chart. And so what I'm going to do here is go down to make a copy and uh, change that to monthly. Okay. Right. <clears throat> and if, you, if, if you've been following both classes and you're an active trader as well, the M3 active trader, you can, you know, we've been using the same charts, but I, I want to keep these cleaner for uh, this class. So on this, we're going to look at the monthly. All right. Now here is uh, what we've been watching and we don't need this one here we want to change that out now why did that do that we don't need this here okay so what we have are our four primary indicators the eri the tsi the signal and bell the and bell trend indicator uh what i need to do here though is get on uh, a different uh version of this that goes out longer 
Okay, so what I'm going to do here is add Bitcoin to watch list, crypto mastery, boom. All righty. So with that, here's why I believe the bottom is in. You guys have probably seen this, unless you're new. This is the uh, monthly chart. Of course, we're on a logarithmic chart so we can see all this. And the only times, here's the quick and dirty of this. Look at this beautiful chart of Bitcoin. The only times we've seen the early reversal indicator on the monthly time frame. At the market bottom in January of 2012, here in the, we can call it the bottom. I mean, certainly there were some double taps down here along this uh, green line here, which let's just double check that is the 50 month EMA. And uh, so the 50 month EMA corresponds to the 200 week uh, EMA, right? So which held through here, held down here technically held in the COVID crash, did not hold here, but we're back above it. But back to my point, ERI is fired here and here at the bottom cycle, bottom of the cycle, not exact, but bottom of the cycle in 15, also here in 2019 and boom right here. So guys, this is the chart to, to keep in mind. If you're a long-term investor, certainly dollar cost averaging in these levels makes sense. Uh, you may not catch the actual bottom. We could come back down to 20K. There's a CME gap there. But uh, for now, we are holding above the 21 and 50 month moving averages. And if we overlay also the trend strength indicator, the TSI, those two together are the powerhouse. Let me hide the ERI oscillator. If nothing else, you guys, if nothing else, you want to be watching for ERI and TSI confirmations so back here very early back in 11 you know so tsi still went green here a bit late but with time and more history these markets are becoming more um i don't want to say predictable but the cycles are maturing eri here and so if you had gone and waited started adding to when the tsi went green and then really getting in when it broke 20 line here certainly that was the bulk of the bull move right there if we put this kind of a uh we do that just to be fair at the top of this market when it broke 20 to the market cycle high this you know call it 59x 60x you know if you were timing the exact tops fortunately we have the bearish eri which confirmed here so let's say you only caught that much still 3000 that's still a 30x you guys now you might be if you're new you're saying well what about this red arrow here wouldn't you have got no because we use the tsi to confirm so here we had a bearish eri early reversal indicator it was a smaller area arrow but that's okay confirmed with the tsi going red that would have been the time to get out these are our signals so here we had a bullish eri confirmed with the tsi here this was the market cycle high in 19 the exit would have been right about here okay so that would have uh got us out of the markets and uh now we don't use this necessarily for short-term swings um on all of it we look at the weekly too but on this monthly basis i'm just looking at the bottom of the market and look at this beautiful signal that we have right here this is the uh, uh what's the phrase here this is the uh this is the money shot, folks, here. So we have the ERI. We have the TSI green coming up here. We're just, we broke above it last two months. So that was the confirmation. And coincidentally, also back above the 21-month moving average. I did predict we'd have a pullback in May, uh, which uh, is happening. So, but it's holding the 21-month moving average, guy. All, all, guys, this is this is bullish overall. So whatever happens in the next few weeks, even if we come down to 25.3, which I've been saying and hold, still it's turning. So, and the signal is going green. And look at this, you guys, the trend indicator is starting to turn green. So when we get a key and a bell on the monthly, look at this, look at this right there. Look at this massive run from back in here. So even if you got in late, and that would have been our other buy signal, for the last run is if you got in late on the bell back here the first move is usually the best so the bell was here that was 400 percent uh you know give or take to the high <clears throat> you don't always catch these exactly 
But uh, you know what I want? I'm curious about you guys is what is our take profit signal on the shorter time frames? What do we usually use as the take profit signal on our daily, weekly? Anybody? We haven't really done this on the monthly. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on that Bollinger band. Yeah, Sam, good, good job, Sam. So the so what happened there is. You know, we, we say, well, you can't time it exactly. Um, you know, this is um look at that. It it was it rode the three is I want to make sure I have the right settings here because yeah, so that's unusual. On the monthly time frame, it can get up and above the Bollinger band and still go higher. You know, sometimes the best discoveries are when you're just playing around with things. Well, what could we do here? to see on a monthly time frame only if that 3BB might be able to be tweaked a bit. Anybody? Well, the standards Bollinger Band uses two standard deviations. We're trying three. Last chance. What if we try four? Never done this. But look at that. Okay. Guys, we're just we're just getting so good at this. Um, let me let me open this up here because if we use a four Bollinger band, where did it tell us to sell? Exactly at the top. Exactly at the top. Because on a four standard deviation Bollinger band, we are you know our our normal rule is if it touches or gets above it. Look at that inside inside this would have kept us in now all right in all fairness it did it did push up above it here a little bit so you might have sold and got back in um this is pure speculation and armchair quarterbacking hindsight 2020 all of that however still useful so but here it contained 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 and then bam it pushed up above it if you had sold that month you would have nailed the top this is in 2018 very interesting, isn't that? You guys are quiet. How many of you like this? Never talked about this before. Never heard anyone else talk about this before. Uh, and so, what happened in the last cycle? Now we did. And again, we we would have you would have you would have pretty much nailed the top here if you got out uh, right there. Now we had other signals, but this would have been an excellent place to get out as it pushed up a button. Let me zoom in on this, you guys. Can you see this? Anybody? So anyway, I guess you're not easily impressed. But right in here, if if you use the, the Bollinger Bands as your exit criteria, thank you, darling. <clears throat> yeah, this is your take profit signal because in here is sort of not clear. You would have say, well, I'll ride it higher. And then this one started to turn. Now, this is a spinning top. So this would have been, you would have confirmed maybe selling out here. But if you waited for the ERI there, that signal didn't close till there. So would you rather have sold here at 37.4 or here at 58? So I don't mean to sound preachy, guys, but I, I'm definitely going to be watching that from now on. And um, that's pretty cool. I, I I did not, you know, that's why this, that's why the bear markets are good to spend time fiddling around for lack of a better term fiddling around you might see something new and by all means if you see something new like we just discovered share it but this is why i believe the bottom's in we have a green tsi all of these signs are selling us the bottom's in and we are about to go higher and uh yeah donnie says the volume blow offs are key too for sure uh, let's see, where were we looking at on the Bollinger Band to see if that coincide, coincides. Yeah, these exactly. Look at the volume on that. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. I was so focused on this here, but uh, these volume levels here on the downside. Uh, it's funny. I like, oh, my Alexa just chimed in and uh, uh, the, the thing is scary how it's always listening. And so right here too. So what is also useful, although... The problem is it moves when you move the chart around. What I was going to say is you can put uh, trend lines, hold a shift line down, and so when you see volume spikes like that, problem is 
it moves not doesn't hold with the volume but um yeah i really haven't seen volume that high before except for these two times that was in march of 2020 interesting right that was the covid crash month then here which was january of 2021 when everything poured back into the market so that would also be worth considering <clears throat> and remembering so okay well very good guys well let's keep moving guys uh, so what i want to do now let's jump back over to the weekly and uh for those of you that uh, are new to crypto mastery uh, if you are watching the youtube replay or you're in the group and don't yet have these you can find out more at crypto mastery.online it's how to get these amazing indicators so uh with this uh and below i just have a stochastics uh, rsi which uh, isn't uh isn't really uh, that important other than <clears throat> sometimes it paints a little different picture it's a different speed oscillator and uh, actually i'm glad we're looking at that certainly certainly recommend and encourage you to use these indicators with your other standard ones so you know you might want to put on an rsi as well good place to find divergences i want to come back to that stochastics rsi and uh is there anything that we can see here as far as a uh, divergences not really uh not so much this is neat this is kind of new i've never seen it shaded before but um that would indicate extreme overbought but that's that's not really relevant what i'm suggesting here is we'll get rid of the rsi um on the, the tsi the stochastics rsi rather uh this is interesting so this is a bullish sign that we could see a bounce here and a push higher so we we could go either way on this and uh that's why i'm saying wait and see we're overbought we have a bearish eri we have the tsi confirming the signals going red so on this weekly basis unfortunately and currently it's it's a bit uh, bearish so what does that mean how do we rectify the daily beings could be bullish weekly bearish uh, i don't know but um the uh there is a golden cross uh, possibly happening uh, here as well so the i don't know these are the right indicators but i have um, been uh, hearing that also we could draw that if we wanted to but i think we're going in into the weeds here the golden cross is a 50 and a 200 right <clears throat> so uh, if we drew well we and it's not an ema so i just don't want to overload us with uh, uh with all of this but why not we can we can do that i think it's the sma indicator let's move doing average is that the uh, golden cross that's not it here i have it on another chart <clears throat> there there's a bunch of different versions of this so what i didn't want to do is overcomplicate the chart and that wasn't the indicator i wanted you know what guys let's not worry about that right now i'm not a I'm not a huge fan of this golden cross death cross it's sort of a lag very much a lagging indicator i'm focused on right here and so on the weekly basis so it's good to watch multiple time frames yeah so well i've been saying on the daily we pull back so in the weekly basis that would coincide with the pullback to the 21 and 50 week moving average and the the different version of the squiggly line is more like that so that is uh, what i think is is probable but i reserve the right to be wrong but this is probable i and, and so overbought on the weekly so the tsi coming down signal is red more than likely if we pull back and then bounce and on this we can see that this tends to double test on the uh, stochastics rsi when it truly bottoms right so when we've been watching that here double tap double tap double tap double tap double tap double so this if we were to see so that's what i think i think we come down and then we bounce and any rallies this week probably be i would uh, be suspect of because this fits our narrative right come back down retest this line all right so there we go well also we and always being aware of our own confirmation bias always be ready to change your mind new information equals new decision as traders we trade what we see fair enough all right any questions you guys 
uh, any other coins we want to watch. Uh, so what we also do in the Crypto Mastery class usually is, and what I'm going to do, let's see, because it's always a pain to set it up each time, that's why I wanted to create a new layout um, for Crypto Mastery. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the Crypto Pair screener and turn that on. And just, just make that full screen so we don't have to look at uh, the chart necessarily or, or minimize it because I want to see more of these. So what we'll do here is uh, I'm going to change some of these filters so that we eliminate some of the noise. Bear with me. I'll wait for your comments. ETH, sure, we'll look at ETH. Okay, so I'm going to turn off some of these columns I don't really care about. Let's see, percentage. Percentage is good. Um, yeah, high, low, I'm not really concerned about the price. Uh, the uh, the price, yes. Technical rating, yes. Volume can be useful, but I want to keep this um, nice and tight. Okay. And then what I want to do is go into the exchanges, turn off the... We, we just want to look at some of these without... Because if we have all of these exchanges, it's going to pull up all the obscure coins we don't really want to focus on. And the, uh, the, the dare I say it, I won't, don't make me say it, the shit coins. Yeah, you know, um, let's keep uh, Binance, Binance US, Coinbase, and uh, KuCoin. Just to kind of get a, a good uh, overall view. That'll cover most of them. <clears throat> so let's take a look. So what's up today? We have Strong Buy. We've got uh, Luna. Um, we're not going to look at Yuna, Luna. That's, you know, we all know why. Uh, Ever, which, what is this? This is a, a Ever scale. I'm not familiar with it. So, you know, um, sometimes you find some gems here. Oh, we do want to add in at least a 21 and 50 day EMA. So I will save this chart if you want to follow along. Though this is how I add these. We could do an EMA ribbon. Haven't played around with that. Um, too much on these, but um, the moving average exponential, what's a double EMA and triple EMA? Always these new indicators, but I wanted a, a moving average. I want two of those. Okay, so with that in mind, let me get rid of those ones we're not going to use. The TEMA, don't need it. I don't need, I'm, I'm going to stick with what I know. The ribbon, just going to confuse things. I want to have an EMA. I want to change that to 21. Style is going to be... Uh, kind of orange and I'll make that a little bit bigger maybe a little darker orange kind of keep that consistent so that's our 21 day EMA and we'll go into the, the second one here we'll change that to a 50 and usually I'm doing that as green so uh there we go there we go why not make it easy to see don't need a smoothing line so there we have it okay so um this one here not much to see fairly new token uh, you know, look, if you want to keep an eye on these, it's kind of, I think this, this is going to sell off to below this and probably head lower, you know, just use basic TA on that. I would, if you, if you like this project and you're familiar with it, you could set an alert at a dollar. So when it gets over a dollar, the problem is, as you can see these big spikes, especially on KuCoin, uh, let me actually not use a daily, but, uh, same, same KuCoin's going to be famous for this pump and dump. So nothing to see there in my opinion. FRA, not familiar with that. Findora. I'm going to put it back on a weekly just to sort of get an idea of what these things are doing. Uh, let's see. LINA. Keep it to the USD just for, you know, 76. These are the ones I kind of want to avoid, though. 75% in a day. These are going to be the pumps and not really worth uh, watching. The strong buys are a bit skewed because we're in a kind of a bear cycle, not much happening. Uh, we've got a buy on MANU. What I'm trying to do is find opportunities we can overlay our indicators with. Okay, so, and uh, uh, Ajax, okay, thank you. Thank you, Jay. I uh, had a feeling that might happen. We'll pull that up. This is interesting here. So if we wanted to pull up uh, Manu, let's see. Um, what do I want to do here? How about this? Have you guys, this is something you might want to know about. Uh, in terms of, the indicators, there's this cool feature, indicator templates. See that? 
And so what I'm going to do is go here and say, save indicator template. I've got a bunch of them here. And what you can do then is preload these on other charts. So you can say, I'll call this a four horsemen, CM for crypto mastery, four horsemen. And uh, that's essentially ERI TSI signal and bell or the trend indicator. And, uh, and I'll hit save. And uh, like that. So what we can do then is go back over to here. Hang on a second. I'm trying to keep all this stuff in order. To so this new chart, go to the indicator templates. And I've got way too many of these, but uh, where did it go? CM4 Horseman. Uh, wait a minute. Why are these all these other ones on there, though? Huh. All right, I'm going to redo that. Uh, let, let me just do some housekeeping with this. So, oh, because I've got all this other stuff in here. Okay, so here, uh, here, I don't need the Ichimoku, the candlestick scanner, Pi cycle bottom. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. Order box, this is the crypto mastery class. So we're going to get rid of all this other stuff that we don't need. Bollinger bands. Yeah, I might leave that. And the radar, of course, and ERI chart. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna do that over. All right, practice makes perfect. Save indicator template CM. You guys can do this along with me, and you can see below now saved indicators ERI chart, radar volume, EMA, two of those Bollinger Band, ERI oscillator, TSI signal and trend. Beautiful. Uh, okay. Well, you know, it's, um, yeah, that's fine. We, we could always add to it. Crypto Mastery, Four Horsemen. You could call it whatever you want. So when we go back over to here, if I want to load those indicators all at once, bing, 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 bam, look at that. So uh, now we've got them all in one chart. Problem is all this gets in the way, but so interesting matrix ai network how did we get on that i don't know but i'm glad we did we on a weekly basis this is one to keep an eye on here and uh let's just add this to our watch list here and uh do that because ai coins have been on a tear uh, in the m3 active trader group we have a, a list of ai coins we're watching so this looks interesting here. Why? ERI. Check. TSI going green. About to break 20. So this is where we want to kind of set alerts and get alerted to these early. The signal, uh, let's see, why is my trend indicator not showing up? Maybe it's too early. But um, the so here's where I would kind of look for trend and support and resistance so look at this so it's hitting resistance where if we wanted to be like wayne gretzky and we go where the puck is going to be right we'd want to know if this can break above and close here so this is when i'll use my alerts add an alert on manu above this kind of support line at 30 so I gave it a little bit more room. We'll just call it 35. So art and the science. So uh, I'll say buy question mark. You know, basically that says to me, go check it out. Uh, so pretty interesting right there. We're, we're, we're over the hour, by the way, guys, but uh, I'll go a little bit farther. I uh, was going to get on a call with Joe, but um, look at that. Now that's the weekly. I also want to look at the daily. Daily looking interesting as well. So there we have it. And matrix AI looking interesting. Let's get uh pull up Ajax here uh, on uh, we can do it on Binance. Uh, they are also on KuCoin and they have sort of 2x. You can play the 2x long. I'm in a 2x long on KuCoin, by the way, full disclosure on Ajax. So let's see. Uh, is it pumping? It's not, I don't see it's pumping necessarily. It's trying to get up above. The 50 day moving average. Now, I don't like this bearish ERI, so I hope that it pumps. Here's the, here's the key thing, you guys, to remember. These indicators can disappear. They are based on the current candle. 
and the current candle closes on a daily basis, 8 p.m. Eastern time. If this push is higher enough that it uh, no longer qualifies as a bearish ERI, then that would be a sign to hold on to this long. If it today at 8 p.m. it's still showing a bearish ERI and this TSI starts to turn red, I'm going to get out of that position. And this is how you use our indicators with standard basic indicators like the exponential moving averages. You notice I'm not using a lot of other fancy things. There's a time and a place for Fibonacci's, et cetera, et cetera. This isn't it, in my opinion, okay? So that's the uh, the daily on that. So basically that's my criteria. Uh, let's look at uh, ETH here, just so we have, we're covering everything for you guys. And let's see, ETH, you guys say CSD, Coinbase, fine, that's good. And um, let me just add this to our watch list since I'm building a new crypto mastery watch list. Yeah. So Ethereum, uh, let's have a look here. Just, we'll turn our indicators on in a moment. Um, you know, had some nice support here right along, I'm just going to eyeball it. And I missed it entirely here. So right around the $1,800 level, that, that is a good, strong support level. So ETH, though, um, you know, it's, it's mostly green on the radar here. And you know what? On the longer time frames, I like to have my radar. You know, you, you use your judgment, but you can use the four hour. Oops, ignore that. Well, there, I just made this all green for us. I mean, <clears throat> what I meant to do, though, uh, that's example of confirmation bias. Hey, I want this to go up, so I'm going to change it to the time frames that are all green. Um, yeah, no, I want to see on this one what you can do for longer time frames is do uh, daily, weekly, monthly, and then three months would be what quarterly. So, yeah, that but there we go. I didn't know that was going to show. This is very bullish, you guys. As of today, Ethereum, all green on the longer-term time frame radar. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, what do we have? We have TSI is a bit overbought. But signal line, green and going higher, like that. We're in a still in a, a trend sequence, so we should see, you know, a couple more days of upside. At least it's not looking bearish here. If we switch to a weekly... Uh, what do we have? Let's see. Again, all green on the radar. Same radar, of course. And uh, holding the 2150 week EMA, that's good. Imagine if I put a 200 weekly SMA on it, that's that's holding as well. So that's bullish. So, you know, it, it's just, but I like the ERI here on the weekly, which confirmed as of Sunday. Uh, it's not quite bullish engulfing, but this pattern here is bullish. This little reversal pattern here. Just zooming out to see, are we? am I missing anything like an inverse head and shoulders? I'm not. So this is just another great example of why these indicators are so good. Because without them, you know, we really wouldn't have much. Uh, so a little less conclusive here on these weeklies. Mostly on the weekly, I'm looking at radar and ERI. Okay. Um. So we, uh, the tea leaves, we, uh, we're just reading the tea leaves, you guys. Let's see, uh, anything else, you guys? I think we've, we've done a pretty good job here. How do you like the new format, by the way? I'll just jump back over here to the, uh, let's see. I don't know. There's too much noise in the, on that one. The gray is kind of boring, but basically it, it, it eliminates a lot of the noise. Uh, you can also click on things like this, only showing things or turning things off. Actually, I do like this. This is the trading view coins heat map. So you can unclick things you don't want to see. So here I just clicked on basically 0% and it turned off all the gray coins. And sometimes the big negatives are where you want to maybe look for opportunities what happens if you click on the exact one? I haven't played. Look at that. This is good job by TradingView, by the way. Hands off to these guys. What a great platform they've created. Look at that. Pull up a chart. Beautiful. Hex is getting murdered. Um, it's it, it it's it's the guy. It's it's kind of a Ponzi. So, um, 
interesting flamboyant uh, founder, but I'd stay away from that. I'm just seeing the functionality. So let's turn off the uh, big losers. Okay, now we've got what's down 2%. Let's look at Polygon. This is actually a really cool tool. How about that? Great format. Yeah, I like that, Rick, as well. So see more advanced chart here. Boom. Pulls up Polygon. We haven't looked at Polygon in a while. So, but here's a great example. Look at this. Guys, I hope you realize what you have in your hands here. Uh, I feel very fortunate. I'm not saying that because we created these. I, I, Joe created these. Uh, I, I co-created the ERI, but I mean, geez, it's so simple, right? So bearish ERI, TSI confirmed. Continued lower, red, continued lower. It came down, had a bullish ERI, but you discount these. You ignore these unless you get a TSI confirmation. And if it's five or six days later and it's sort of sideways, I ignore. I generally ignore them. However, Matt Polygon's going down, you guys. Uh, not zero, not a business, no, but here, bearish ERI, TSI confirming on the daily. Okay, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. Is there news? Before we get to that, though, what do we have here? We have a bag of money. This was your sell signal also to get out. So as Polygon goes lower, if you're holding this, it's on you. Um, and, and and by the way, if you are holding Polygon, I would can't give trading advice, but this is a clear indication this is going to come lower. So you might want to lighten your position, look to dollar cost average. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. What's the news? uh you know no real news on that but anyway cool i think we've come we've stumbled upon a pretty cool new format and i'm going to add uh, i am going to add why am where did it go add to the watch list what's going on there oh it's down below i'm going to add this to our uh, watch list if there's any more you guys want to add to our watch list let me know because i've created again the new crypto mastery um watch list here so let's uh, let's keep going here. I'll turn that off. I want to make sure we don't have a bazillion charts open like we did on uh, we sometimes do on the other one. So XRP. Let's look on the positive side. XRP is pushing higher though. What's going on on XRP? We should look at that. Uh, I don't. I'm agnostic. Look at this. Okay. Uh, we. So there's a new bell on XRP. We kind of missed this. Something's something's going on. We missed it. Something is happening here. I would not chase this. The Bollinger Bands hitting the top of the Bollinger Bands. Not sure why my volume data. Why is there no volume data on XRP? Uh, data data vendor. Crypto.com. Okay, well, that's why. Um, essentially, this, will, this should come back. So if you like XRP, I would wait for a pullback here. Let's look at the weekly, though. Um, it looks overbought to me on but the radar well the radar just went red on the daily yeah this is overbought i would not be chasing xrp i'd be looking for a pullback to the rising 21 and 50 day moving average uh the clue would have been this candle here had we been watching and uh and, and really back here tsi so sometimes you don't get the eri that's why that checklist is so important well, make sure you guys have that do you know what i'm talking about by your crypto mastery checklist so I'm going to pull that up on another window and give it to you guys. Yeah, Pirate J, exactly. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Success checklist. I'm going to digging that up for you guys. Here. Uh, it's the PDF version. Shoot, what did I, what did I do here? Bear with me, guys. I want to get this to you guys. I got something in the way of my uh, crypto mesh success checklist PDF M3. And um, right, I have the PDF version. I don't think I can drop that in. Maybe I can. Can I add files onto this? I, normally we have a uh, URL for it. Well, here, I'm going to show it to you. And you guys have this in the members area, by the way. So there you go. So that's what we can do. Uh, Crypto mem Mastery members, you have this. So 
but uh, let me know. Can you uh, can you see this? I know you can't see it yet, but let me know if you can see this. Uh, otherwise, uh, this won't make sense. Can you guys see this? So we have is the ERI showing a green up arrow. Now we don't always have it. So my point is, thank you, Rick. Point is this on the chart of XRP down in here, there was not an ERI, but we had a TSI, we had a signal, green line, we had a bell. Okay. So TSI, green above the 20 line, yes. Signal line turned from red to green, yes. Is your trend indicator showing a bell? Yes. Is the green indicator have a green line? Yes. This will also always be green, actually, when this goes to bell, I think. But uh, when you get to four out of 19, that's a good score to take the trade. How many of you guys are using this, whether you print it out or have it uh, on an open window, extra monitor? Highly, highly recommend you do this. And then there's other things you can add to that bullish engulfing candle. Is it at trend line support? Let's have a look. Let me move this over so I know where to find it. Okay, so the other thing now, was there trend line support? This is where you start looking for other clues though, right? So yeah, there was some trend line support there. Uh, was below the 21 and 50 day moving average, so not great, but one, two, three, four, and there may be others, but uh, that's that's enough. And uh, so now the vol index, that's curious too. We, so we should talk about these other indicators while we're here. And uh, I do like the vol index for um, catching it, for, for confirming oversold and overbought conditions. And uh, what do we have? So sure enough, <clears throat> we did have the vol index coming up out of the red into the black. This is uh, also, this is very important to add in as a, another, an additional confirm, sorry, confirming indicator. It's not very often on a daily basis that we see that. I'm mostly using it on a four hour, one hour chart. Okay, so so that is good to see. So in this case, we would also say yes there. So now we have a five out of 19 checklist. Uh, is there a rocket at support? No, we didn't see one. Are there multiple ERI signals? Didn't see one. So, you know, um, but that's okay. We've got five not five out of nineteen on that. So that basically, you know, again, this is hindsight twenty twenty. Obviously, uh, wh why I don't like this trade currently is it's approaching overbought. It's overbought on the TSI. We are getting another bell though. In the bull markets, we can see multiple sequences of key bell, key bell, key bell. But the last one petered out and sort of ran its course. So we want to use this as a clue. So I would not be chasing XRP here. So I think that's pretty good. That's been a good uh, overview here of the class. I'm going to close that because I don't want to see that anymore. And um, But I like this new format here, and these, they've done a great job on all this. So we covered XRP. We covered Polygon. Do we want to look at Solana real quick? Uh, this is the uh, interactive part of the class. I know you guys are doing other things. I, I want to I am want to be respectful of your time here, but... Um, Axie Infinity, I'm scamming Phantom Coin. Let's look at Solana, and yeah, and and then uh, maybe Phantom Coin real quick. So the advanced chart on Solana, we got here. What do we got? Let me turn off the Bollingers. There, this volume indicator, something buggered about this. Well, you know what? It, it's strange. It's it's so it's. I guess Trading View has some kind of deal with crypto. Uh I don't know where they're pulling their data. That's my only complaint about it because I'm not getting volume data on this. But um, anyway, uh, we'll sort that out later. So Solana, what do we have? Not a whole lot other than, well, I don't know you guys. Anyone else see it? Once you see it, you can't unsee it. For extra credit, some of you, what is it? Uh, I don't know that it looks good here. But uh, let me see. I want to draw it this way. We have a big old what? 
Maybe a big old cup and handle forming. Yeah, good, Alex. All right, so you saw it. Okay, good. We're on the same page. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the, the, how to draw this thing. There's a cup and handle indicator, I believe, but here is the handle. So, and here is the cup. What do we want to see? Where would we set an alert for this? Handle breakout, call it uh, $27. Get an alert on $27, crossing up, boom. So like I said, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And there it is. C and H break out question mark question mark means go check it out and really what it means is go see what our indicators are showing us so right now though we do have an eri on this double eri we've got a, a tsi signal we've got the bell we technically we have all the indicators lining up but i was wanting to show the volume because uh just there's not a lot of volume here and that is basically means people. So a lot is it's had, it's had trouble. Obviously, it, it'll run again, but I don't really want to look at it again until and unless it breaks out of the handle. So there you go. So we can put that away for now. And uh, let's see. Let me add the XRP to our watch list. Crypto Mastery done. Okay, we got that. And um, I don't know if it'll save all the drawings, but that's fine too. Let's add Solana. So Lana. Named after Solana Beach, California. Beautiful place. I almost moved there. Uh, all right. Add to watch list. Come on now. Why won't it let me add to the watch list? Huh. Solana. Not on the watch list. All right. Can't, won't let me do it, you guys. Well, at any rate, I want to look at one more. Uh, let's see. Changes may not be saved. I guess I should save it. I'll just leave that open and save it. So this will be our swing uh, chart. We can use it, look at everything. I want to look at one more. Let's look at Phantom Coin. Actually, look at I'm gonna look at EOS for one reason. I met the founders of EOS. Whoa. On at a Bitcoin mastermind in St. Martin in 2014. And they were talking about someday you'll be able to share your favorite song with somebody and earn Bitcoin or crypto for the referral. Um, we were all thought it was crazy bullshit, obviously. And um, but now that stuff, this stuff's starting to happen. But uh, EOS is just just has not really done much. So maybe someday. I don't know. I'm gonna throw an alert on a dollar forty. Just, but I've always, I've always kind of lost money on EOS actually, but I'm curious there, see if that ever gets out of it. Uh, so close EOS, I'll leave there and um, get the hang of this, I like this format. Uh, Aptos here, what else? A phantom coin, then we'll call it a day. Right up, coming up right on 130. I try to keep these classes to an hour. Uh, where did phantom coin go? Let's get rid of some of the red. Anyone see it? Uh, Filecoin is doing something. Not quite there yet. Let me just pull in Phantom Coin. All green on the radar on Phantom or Filecoin, rather. Uh, Filecoin, coolest website you've ever seen. Go check it out when you have time. Uh, Phantom Coin, UST, Bitfinex. These are all going to be the same for the most part, but trying to stay away from. So it doesn't look like I'm endorsing a lot of these other coins. Can you believe Bittrex? Gone. I liked Bittrex, but uh, the SEC uh, crushed them like an insect, <clears throat> sadly. Uh, so, um, by the way, when using the vol index, it will color the candles. So sometimes I'll just remove it. But uh, anyway, Phantom Coin not looking very good. Weekly basis, uh, looking oversold both on the daily weekly basis, though. So uh, we will keep an eye on it. But right now, not looking terribly good. OK, so that's all we have time for you guys. So how, hopefully you enjoy the class. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to, um, you know, let me know your comments in the chat. If you're watching the YouTube replay and you like what you see, you can find these indicators at CryptoMastery.online which uh, I'm pulling up here and we've got a, a special going on for the next three days. So 
But uh, these are the best indicators, hands down, I've used in 25 years of trading. So much so that I found the founder and creator of them, uh, hunted him down. Actually, serendipity stepped in and I uh, was introduced to him, but uh, so glad that we did because uh, as we've shown, these indicators have been nailing the swing lows and highs. Here's the weekly chart, high, low, high, low, high, uh, low, high. So essentially capturing huge moves in Bitcoin and avoiding 50% drops multiple times, learning to read these signals and catching huge winners like these. So it is the foundation of what we do here. Uh, so you can go to cryptomastery.online. That'll redirect you a little bit, but um, there you have it, everyone. So uh, uh, we will touch base next week. Uh, thanks for the feedback. Thanks for the engagement, everybody. And uh, if you're watching on the YouTubes, to put down below if you'd like us to look any coins next week. And uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and share, and all that stuff. So thanks, guys. We'll see you uh, next week. If you're in the M3 Trader, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.